Hey everybody, it's David and Brian with VM Blog, and we're here live in Nashville, Tennessee at the iGel Disrupt event. We're here at the Gaylord Opulent Resort, and we'll be doing live video coverage of the event and talking with some of the iGel partners in the end user computing space. Make sure to check out our videos at the events.vmblog.com page. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee at the iGel Disrupt 2020 event, and I'm here with Mike Walsh from Cloud Jumper. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the company and how you fit into the EUC space? Sure. Uh, Cloud Jumper has been uh, providing management tools for remote workspaces for almost two decades now. I uh, started out in the Citrix world, uh, moved into uh, supporting RDS systems in the last five or six years. And then a couple years ago, we started working with Microsoft, uh, what was RDMI at the time, but the WBD team, uh, right. to create orchestration automation around deploying WBT, WBD workspaces and then managing those. And how did you start working together with iGel and what's your partnership? Yeah, them? I think um, one of the questions we get a lot when we talk about remote workspaces, people have made the commitment to move their end users up to the cloud. The next follow-on question is, well, how do I get them there? What do I use for endpoints? I really don't want to manage a Windows environment, my uh, Windows machines in my local environment, and manage a WBD instance. Right. Uh, so we we uh, partnered up with iGel um, because their endpoint is relatively straightforward, very secure, um, and it extends the life of uh, machines that might be running Windows 7 or some older laptops and desktops that they don't want to retire. Um, they can actually extend those by just using those as the host for the UD Pocket. Uh, so the combination of that gives a full product solution for and, uh, customers looking to move the brand users up, up, uh, up to Azure. And have you had any recent uh, product announcements or plans for 2020? Sure, I think our focus in 2020, uh, we announced uh, WVD support uh, before the, uh, the product went GA last year. Uh, WVD 2.0 is coming out um, later in the year with Microsoft, so we'll be supporting that. Uh, we're adding functionality to things uh, to support things like MSX, MSIX App Attach, which is the application stack uh, that Microsoft's promoting for WVD. Uh, we've focused uh, for this quarter on uh, the storage layer because uh, people have uh, the need to store uh, user profiles using FS Logics, uh, personal folders and files that don't fit into OneDrive, and then corporate data. So we've worked with uh, with NetApp to um, to incorporate Azure NetApp files for those businesses that need that kind of capacity and that kind of performance on the storage layer. I understand you have a demo with you. Sure, we yep. Take uh, we'll take a quick look um, on the deployment side here. Uh, if we, one of the challenges for deploying WBD is to actually create the, the environment. Uh, we use a security principle in Azure uh, to do that in uh, using Microsoft best practices. Uh, that has a limited set of permissions, but it can do everything from uh, creating all the components in the Azure subscription, so we can start from blank, all the way through if you've already extended your Azure environment into, uh, your on-premise environment into Azure with, say, uh, traditional Active Directory, uh, other applications, other sub-network components, we can actually fit into that environment as well. Um, so that's one of our early architecture discussions is what do you actually want to do in terms of your current environment? Uh, are you trying to move everything in a migration type move? Or are you trying to add to the environment you already have? So our, our tool set will do both of those components. Uh, and then we can help uh, create the, the basic things uh, that everybody's familiar with now with, with WVD. Um, if I pick my uh, WVD tenant here, I can create a new host pool. So we'll call this uh, the IGL Disrupt Host Pool. Put in a short description. And I have to make a couple of choices. In this case, I want to run shared because that's the most cost efficient. Um, one of the questions we get a lot uh, in terms of, I'll pick a load balancer for depth first because we help uh, manage those resources. Um, but one of the big discussion points and one of the things we've actually added to the product in recent months here is how do I actually use Azure images that I've either built or imported into the Azure side. For us, if you actually have the image anywhere that's accessible via permissions to the subscription, we can use that. So we can use stuff out of the marketplace, we can use an image you've created with another tool set like SCCM, or you can actually use our tool set to, to create custom images that include your applications, it's up to you. So as you can see, there's a pretty extensive list of all the, uh, all the images that this particular subscription can see. So we'll pick that as our, our base image. Uh, we also pick the type, so anything that you, because we talk right to the REST API, uh, it looks at the list of any machines available in that particular uh, Azure region, and we pick up that list and allow you to, to size the machine that way. So we'll pick a D series here, we'll pick a D2, that's pretty much the workhorse that we found so far in the first six months to a year of, of doing this. Let me just scroll down to that. Yep, and we'll just do a D2, V2, we'll pick the storage type. And then I can tell it, uh, do you want one of these instances, do you want 10, do you want, I have a customer that tried to do 293 in the same host pool, that took a little while, but uh, it does eventually get done uh, for that piece. And that's all it takes to, to add a host pool. Um, that process, if you're using the PowerShell script version, 
um, can take you, you know, four, five, six hours. Uh, we set it up here in a couple minutes and it's actually going to be finished running probably for five machines and probably done in a half an hour or so. Um, so it's really helpful um, for deploying, deploying the software. Yeah, that's piece. So where can our uh, viewers go if they want to find out more information about Cloud Jumper and some of the stuff we talked about today? Yep, so in general about the company, cloudjumper.com. If you're specifically interested in, in WBD, you can go to getwbd.com and that gives you a, a listing of the features, gives you a link to sign up for a, a demo or, or a proof of concept instance, um, and gets you in contact with our team so that we can help you uh, deploy WBD and try it out. Well, great, well thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. Happy to be here, thank you. Hey everyone. I hope you enjoyed this VM blog video from the iGel Disrupt 2020 event in Nashville. And if you did like it, please like the video below and also hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, we do a lot of events throughout the year covering IT, and uh, if you want to stay up to date with us, you know, and you're subscribed, you'll get notified when we post a new video. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Or, and, or vmblog.com or, or our events.vmblog.com page, which has all of our different events that we cover throughout the year.